So this is a case that Graham had, um, and this was a 14-year-old boy who moved up from Adelaide, and he was at the climbing wall, as you are. Um, he felt a bit dizzy. Um, he was on holiday, so he wasn't really taking his beta blocker at the moment because he was having a holiday from it. Um, and then he had a syncope, but he was at the top of the climbing wall, so he was just kind of dangling there for about 30 minutes um, before they could get him down and start CPR. So there was good CPR going on by the time the QAS had arrived. He got a couple of shocks, and luckily for him, he didn't need to have any adrenaline, and we'll come to that why that is now. So the team was prepared. Um, when he arrived, he was still unconscious as a relation to his probably long um, sort of downtime. Um, and he was intubated, ventilated, and went for sort of post-resuscitation care. And then a bit more story came out. The story was that he had this condition, and he was supposed to go everywhere with his external defibrillator. And he was supposed to take beta blockers, and he was supposed to not do anything that might be exciting or exertional. Um, so he kind of didn't do any of those things. And he had this rare condition, which I haven't ever seen since, um, but he has catecholamine, can't say it, catecholamergic, I shouldn't try again, polymorphic VT. Um, and so he, at the time, they discussed where they would put an implantable defibrillator in, um, but they were moving house and they were coming to see us and all of the other things and make us all very frightened and scared. Um, and that's what happened to him. So it's this condition. Um, it can be first presenting with somebody just who comes in in cardiac arrest. Um, the mean age of presentation is around six to ten years and at the age of six he'd had a run of what had thought to be seizures and then he'd seen a cardiologist in Adelaide and this had all been picked up. Um, it's an inherited arrhythmia. Its prevalence is one in 10,000, so it's not massively common. But the key thing is here, you don't want them to have anything that increases their adrenergic response. So if he had got further down the algorithm, and Graham and I have talked about this and said, well, what would you have done? Like, you know, he shouldn't, like if you gave him adrenaline, that would have been a bad thing. Anyway, so that's the diagnosis that he had, but he had, they have a normal e resting ECG. So again, it's on the history. Consider, could this be a thing? Um, and they exercise stress test them, and usually with that adrenergic response, you'll see them start to have their polymorphic VT. So he actually um, did have a long rehabilitation, but looking at his notes, he's actually now quite functional. He was left with very mild hemiplegia on the left, but he's actually now an 18-year-old with an implantable defibrillator. Um, and the other treatment for that is you can have a sympathomimectomy if you're getting really lots of problems with that. So just coming back to that sort of differential of that child who has the syncope, um, there's the kind of big five. So look for long QT, look for signs of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, think of Brigada, WPW, and then this a condition which is... Um, oh my goodness, I've had a blank. Um, right ventricular arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia. So the key thing here is these little um, epsilon waves. So these little bobbly things. Oh, there's my pointer. Just at the end of the QRS complexes. So have a look for that. That's where the area of the right ventricle gets dis, um, sort of um, lots of fatty infiltration. So you get these little islands that then can sort of short circuit and cause this problem, another inherited condition.